you've been a fan of football for a while, you're probably familiar with what I like to call the attitude era of the Premier League. From the early 90s to roughly the mid-2000s, English football was filled to the brim with hard man type players. And although many players may have fit the hard man image, perhaps none were quite as successful as Roy Keane. Despite the fact that nowadays he's more commonly seen heaping praise on Dennis Irwin. My God, Dennis, imagine if Dennis was playing now. He was once one of the most feared and talented midfielders in all of England. But it's been some time since he's retired, and some people may need a refresher. So with that being said, how good was Roy Keane really? What's up everyone, and welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a brief look into the highs and lows of the career of the iconic Roy Keane. Originally from Ireland, Roy Keane was born into a working class family in 1971. He joined his first youth football club, Rockmount, at the age of 10. And even back then, he was known as a promising, energetic young player. During his early years, he was a lot smaller than most other boys his age, but nonetheless got into the odd school fight or two. And as you can imagine, due to his size, these fights rarely ended well for him. Keane's response to this treatment, however, was joining a local boxing gym. And he was actually quite good, to be fair, winning all competitive matches that he was a part of. This was probably the first sign of the intense fighting spirit that he would later show the world. To quote a family friend of Keane's that he knew when he was younger, what you have to understand about Roy is that in those early days, he had to try harder than anyone else to make up for what some felt was a lack of physical presence. That determination has never left him. Despite his early successes in boxing, football was his true love. He would later stop boxing altogether to pursue football more seriously. After playing for Rockmount for roughly nine years, Keane went on to join another local Irish team, Cove Ramblers, in 1989. However, he had his mind set on playing football professionally in England and applied to as many English football clubs as he possibly could. According to his former manager at Cove Ramblers, Keane wrote to a staggering 92 different clubs requesting a trial. The only club that even responded was Nottingham Forest. And after a trial, Keane transferred to Nottingham Forest for a fee of £47,000 in 1990. This roughly translates to £108,000 in today's currency. At Nottingham Forest, he only went from strength to strength, making 114 appearances for them in a three-year period. He even showed his eye for goal, scoring 22 goals in that same period as a box-to-box -box midfielder. Now at the time of signing for Nottingham Forest, Keane was already known as being a tireless runner and possessing great technique. However, it was here that Keane truly began to develop into the gritty, no-nonsense box-to-box midfielder that we're all familiar with. To give you an idea of the environment that he was playing in, Keane's previously stated that he was once punched in the face by his coach at the time, Brian Clough, after making a mistake that led to a goal. However, he was too grateful for the opportunity that Brian Clough and Nottingham Forest had given him to play in England to bear any ill will towards them. Earlier on, when I refer to this era of football as an attitude era, I really wasn't joking. After an array of stellar performances for Nottingham, Keane began attracting some serious attention from a lot of the top teams in the world. Reportedly, interest came from clubs such as Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Blackburn Rovers, who were quite a big deal back then, to be fair. However, as we all know, Manchester United ended up being his final destination, as the club signed him for £3.7 million in 1993, a British transfer record at the time. This translates to roughly £8.6 million in today's currency. At the time he moved, United had just won the Premier League title and were incredibly strong, with players such as Eric Cantona, Paul Ince, Mark Hughes and Brian Robson being very well established. However, various injuries to the then 36-year-old Brian Robson meant that Keane got ample playing time in his first season with the club, and he quickly repaid the faith that United had in him by helping them to the second ever Premier League title in 1994. Over the next three years, even more success came his way as United picked up two more Premier League titles and Keane firmly established himself as a leader in the United midfield. In 1997, Keane took on the role of Manchester United captain after Eric Cantona announced his shock retirement. For some players, being handed the captaincy is far too much of a burden on them, and it can often lead to them buckling under the pressure and losing their form. This clearly was not the case for Roy Keane. His fierce competitive streak and aggression were as intense as ever. Unfortunately, shortly after receiving the captaincy, Keane was sidelined due to an untimely cruciate ligament injury in a match between Manchester United and Leeds United. Keane received this injury after attempting a tackle on Ulf Inge Haaland. To add insult to injury, Haaland even believed that Keane was feigning his injury and berated him while he was rolling on the floor in pain. Now, just a side note for all of you that may not be familiar with how the story ends, this is not the end 
between Keane and Haaland. Keane was out for the remainder of the 97-98 season, where United missed out on the title at the hands of Arsenal. However, he was right back in action just in time for the 98-99 season, and his timing could not have been better, as this was the most successful singular season in the history of Manchester United Football Club. And United were in fine form this season, with consistently eye-catching performances from each player. And it shouldn't surprise you that Keane played a starring role here. One of the standout fixtures of the season came against Juventus in the Champions League semi-final second leg. After a 1-1 draw at Old Trafford in the first leg, United travelled to Italy for the reverse fixture. And unfortunately, the first 11 minutes of that match could not have gone worse for the English side, as Juventus quickly took a 2-0 lead. However, what followed from Keane was, in my opinion, probably one of the greatest individual performances of all time, and certainly the best individual performance of his entire career. With a captain's contribution, Keane scored the first of three goals for United that would secure a 3-2 win over Juventus and earned a Man of the Match award in the process. Apart from the goals, Keane's tireless running, leadership and overall intensity were cited as the main reason behind the comeback. Adding on to this, Keane massively outperformed a star-studded Juventus midfield, which consisted of players such as Edgar Davids, Didier Deschamps and Zinedine Zidane, the latter of which was the holder of the Ballon d'Or at the time. Sir Alex Ferguson was quick to heap praise on Keane for this performance, stating, It was one of the most emphatic displays of selflessness I have ever seen on a football field. Ferguson even went on to say that he believed Keane would rather die of exhaustion than lose. Sadly, Keane received a yellow card for a foul on Zidane in that same match, which ruled him out for the final. Nonetheless, United went on to win the Champions League against Bayern Munich in that final, and this completed a famous treble which included the Champions League, the FA Cup and the Premier League. To this day, Man United are still the only English club to ever achieve this feat in one season. Keane's performances throughout the 98-99 season earned him a 5th place finish in the Ballon d'Or rankings for the year of 1999. In the years that followed the treble victory, United continued their success, winning two more Premier League titles in the 99-2000 and the 2000-2001 season, with Keane continuing his captaincy. In the 2000-2001 season, Keane saw himself in a little bit of controversy. In a match between Man United and Man City, Keane went on to commit a horrendous tackle on a player that would earn him a straight red card and a combined eight-match ban. The player that he committed the foul on? None other than Ulf Inge Haaland. Several people suggest that Keane did this out of revenge for the first tackle three years before this. This suspicion was only confirmed three years later, after the release of Keane's autobiography in 2003. In his book, he essentially admitted to kicking out at Haaland on purpose. Now, this is where things get interesting. Shortly after this tackle, Ulf Inge Haaland retired. This fueled rumours that Haaland retired due to the Keane tackle. However, this rumour was debunked after it had been revealed that Haaland had been carrying the injury that caused his retirement for several months before the tackle, and that the Keane tackle actually didn't affect it in any way. Moving on to the back end of Keane's career and going forward to the preseason camp before the 2005-2006 Premier League season, reports from United came out that tension between Ferguson and Keane began to rise. The two reportedly clashed over the quality of the training sessions as well as the coaching methods of then assistant manager Carlos Cuerros. After 12 and a half years with United and a rather public falling out with Sir Alex Ferguson, Keane ended up leaving the club and transferring to Celtic in November 2005. However, he only went to spend half a season at the Scottish club and announced his retirement altogether from football on the 12th of June 2006. In his illustrious career, Keane won dozens upon dozens of awards. However, the most notable were undoubtedly seven Premier League titles, four FA Cups and a Champions League title. Not too shabby. Following on from this, Keane went straight into management. Over the years, he's coached a wide variety of teams such as Sunderland and Ipswich Town. He's also been the assistant manager for teams such as the Republic of Ireland, Aston Villa and Nottingham Forest. Unfortunately for Keane, he was never really able to recapture the sort of success that he enjoyed on the pitch as a player in his managerial career. However, fortunately for him, and for us might I add, he's quickly become one of the best additions to the Sky Sports punditry team. I mean, seeing his reactions to players that aren't 100% committed will always be hilarious. I am flabbergasted. I wouldn't even let him underboss after the match. What a legend. And that brings us to the end of the video. I'd be interested to hear how you all rate Roy Keane's career. And even further to that, how much do you think Keane would go for in today's transfer market? If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, but obviously no pressure. Cheers for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.